I'm fast. I'm a girl's girl. I'm fast. Do you, you want to go? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm really <laughs> but all the women like this? Okay. Sorry. Karen Clark. Thank you. I appreciate it. So just so you know, we talked to um, John first about oh. flip clocking Pilton and M126 so that we can. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah, once you get the. Sorry, because it's already nine. Is it there? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. Well, I'll take it. Hey, I'm John. Hey, I'm Sean. Sean. I think we've met. Hello, guys. Right, Carol. Yeah. Al? John, nice to see you again. again. And John, this is Sue Costing in the property. Hey, John, nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay. We can't tell you what happened because you nope. used nothing. yourself. So therefore, no, we're not, not going to tell you afterwards. Tell me nothing. Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. They're coming back in. You're not supposed they to read it. You can't read it in the paper either if you can't read it yourself. What? You have to blind yourself. I left the room, people. Uh, well, there was I don't no know influence that at this table. But I'm going to lean on you for the next one. Okay. <laughs> okay. I I come to these things. I've been wondering what's been going on there. You know, I didn't know they bought it or Oh, oh, yes. Mm. Back to the phone. I'm John, by the way, Mr. Andrew. Oh, hello, I'm Andrea. Nice to meet you. You ready for this one? Okay. Um, so we have the application, right? There are two applications. There are two applications. There is one. Have there you seen these, John? I have seen the application, yes. Okay. So the, mm -hmm. so the first one, the first issue is uh, let's take care of the secret conundrum. Not conundrum, secret requirements. Um, so, do I have a motion concerning the secret status of this application? I know that it is a type one application. It is a modification of a commercial structure in the nationally listed area of the historic district. Um, I, I would like to add to that that we're talking about uh, not just a modification, but a demolition. The proposed demolition. Oh, sorry, Kathleen, could you say it again? Uh, I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so it's a, it's a type one, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, uh, we met with the planning board uh, chairman to discuss the issue of um, lead agency, mm -hmm. and uh, we are declaring ourselves the lead agency. And well, you actually declare your intent in the lead agency. Then you have to circulate to the zoning board and the planning board, and they have 30 days to either object um, or they could consent. They can either consent in writing or their lack of any response after 30 days would be a, a consent as well. So, um, you would have to circulate the application as well as the long form EAF. Now, I did not see a copy of that with your application. We don't have it yet. Okay, so you can certainly still declare your intent to be lead agency, and then once once Karen submits the long form EAF, we can circulate, and that will start the clock on the 30 days. Okay. Um. What once the form is received? <coughs> Right now, yes. am, am, am I correct that um, Karen fills out part one? Correct. And then uh, part there, two. There are part two and three which need to be filled out. 
by us or a consultant hired by us. Correct. That would essentially, part two and three are essentially your negative declaration if you come to that. Correct. Okay. So if you can prepare the part one, uh, and John, you're going to prepare the the notice that we're going to send. I, I did. I drafted one. I noticed a couple of typos. <coughs> it was sent around about four. So yeah, I, I apologize. It. I thought I sent it sooner, and then I just realized I miss, there's a typo in your name. That's not a good thing. You know, <laughs> not, not I'm not not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I did prepare one, and really. Um, for your purposes, it's just to make sure I have the correct description. I just, I really don't know much about the application and the spelling in the next minor detail. I have it Okay. Oh, thanks. So, because I, I don't really know much about this application, only what, um, I, I know I spoke to the chairman of the planning board briefly about it, and then I reviewed the application material briefly. And you have a set of plans that have been submitted already, or? We have we submitted have? numerous sets of okay. plans. So whatever the latest <laughs> version is, so you need to send the applications, the latest set, set of plans, and the long form EAF. Okay. Okay, and so now, because you have submitted numerous sets of plans, but not to us, because this is the first time we're seeing this application. Well, Prior to that, it was all the workshop. workshop. Right. So we sub well, that, that's one of the questions I have for you. We actually we submitted two applications to you as as right. well. One was for the demolition, and one was for the new construction. And with the new construction, we did submit a set of plans. However, we haven't discussed that at all with your board yet because mm -hmm. we've only been discussing the demolition. So. Tonight I have more plans to submit um, in regards to new construction. I imagine that you know it will be a number of meetings while we're putting down the details of that, but in terms of moving forward with the EAF, if we have preliminary plans to submit. Yes, they don't the have area. to be perfect. Yes, okay. it's, it's early in the process. Okay. And that's the whole point of CEPA is to circulate to everybody involved early in the process. If things change, they change. Really, the, the idea is just so, just so the boards have enough so they can determine who needs to be lead agency. So that way, when the zoning board looks at the plans, they say, well, you know, this is really a historic issue. Right. Or planning board looks at the plans and says, well, there's really not much for us. It's really more for the historic board. Right. Okay. So the idea is just to, to figure out who the lead agency is at this point. Okay, so uh, well, let's let's finish with the notice first, because uh, uh, the other thing is is that uh, of the stuff that's been submitted, I just want to make sure that you're circulating the correct stuff. All right, uh, so the description of application and demolition of two existing two-story structure, approximately 70 square feet, replace it with a new two-story. Do you know the existing? the existing square footage of the, or the square footage of the existing building? I'm not at the top of my head, but I... Okay, if you can send that to me, I would appreciate it. And then uh, the size of the structure that you're proposing to. Right, because I would assume that's on the proposed site. Yeah. It, it is. And okay. also, just for your reference, the tonight I'm submitting different plans to present the new building. However, the original plans that we submitted with the application <coughs> to you for the new construction, those exact plans went to the planning and zoning board. So I think in terms of footprint, regardless of style, um, that's probably um, a good representation of building size in terms of the AF. I don't know if that will suffice in terms of this application. If if uh, plans were already submitted to other boards, do we have to send them copies of that again? Or? What you could do is reference the prior plans that were sent, so that way you don't have to generate okay. and, and kill more trees. Yeah. So just so that they know that it's not just these plans, but also okay. plans dated such and such that were um, okay. 
send to you on whatever they So you're saying circulate the new plan or not circulate the circulate new plan? Circulate the new plan. Mm -hmm. But I guess there was uh, a but prior not copy one. the old one with right. it and send it along. Okay, okay. But just reference the old plan as well. Okay, okay but that that should be in our notice. Right? Yeah, so what I um, so at the bottom it talks about involved agency circulation. So this notice is being sent along with the following uh, to the following involved agencies along with we can do long environmental assessment form copies of the latest proposed plans. Then we can just put as well as plans dated whatever that were previously sent on or previously circulated on whatever the date is. So they were submitted as workshop submissions to those boards? Well, they were submitted with our application. So you made applications? Correct. And we've had one workshop with the planning board and one meeting with zoning, but I don't believe it was an official workshop. Okay, now uh, the square footage that the, the blank spaces, can you send that directly to <coughs> John? So, because ultimately you're going to prepare the official. Uh, I'll revise it, yes. Okay. I don't know whether I would call this an title of action, demolition and reconstruction. I think I would call it an, and new construction. Reconstruction sounds like you're taking right. part right. Putting it in again. Okay. <laughs> so um just so that at least they're stealing. That's okay. You can steal my pen from the Okay. Um, can you just briefly review for the benefit of the board as well as the applicant uh, the procedure that you know, we're following uh, concerning the uh, seat? Sure. Um, since this is a type one action, as you know, that it's in the historic district, uh, you have to conduct coordinated review with the other involved agencies. So involved agencies are any agency that has to make a, a decision or a determination. So in this case, you're not only applying to the HDRB, you also have to apply to the zoning board for the variance, I think for front yard, as well as to the planning board. I think it's just site plan, right? Because right. the uses aren't changing, right? It's currently just right. staying the same, but you still need site plan approval. So these, the, all three boards are agencies that have to issue a decision. One of those three boards has to be the lead agency, and since it's a type one action, it has to be coordinated. Coordinated meaning that way you don't have separate um, secret reviews or environmental reviews. You, want, you, want, you have to have one environmental review when you have a type one action. So here, uh, the HDRB is circulating its intent to be the lead agency. So they want to be the ones that take the lead with respect to the environmental review. So the first step is to get the, the application materials, the long form EAF and the plans that we talked about, and to circulate for purposes of notifying the other boards and seeing if anyone else has any objections or if any other board wants to be a lead agency. Um, so you wait, you give them 30 days, and after the 30 days, um, usually, Usually there's kind of an issue, sometimes there's conflicts. Um, but uh, after the 30 days, then the board will be the lead agency, and then you can kind of, you know, start your environmental review. Okay. Um, by the environmental review, uh, what are we talking about? Because... Uh, right, so there's a bunch of criteria that you have to look at. So this, you have to determine whether you know, whether this will have the significant or potential significant impacts on the environment. And the question is, you know, are you going to issue a negative declaration, which basically says there's not going to be significant environmental impacts, or if you're going to issue a positive declaration, which means that you feel like you need more information and you need to prepare an environmental impacts. <coughs> so there's certain criteria that you look at, and for an application like this, um, you know, some of the criteria that I, off the top of my head, 
obviously there's the historic district impacts, community character impacts. Those are certain criteria that they look at um, under the state regulations. In addition, you look also look at stormwater drainage. I think there's going to be a paved parking area. So that's going to be another environmental issue that you have to look at. And so well, do you're going we to look at that or the planning board looks at that? You guys are in charge as far as making sure the information is all there. Okay. So essentially, we would then have to, we could theoretically turn to the planning board and say, you know, please review these. Yes. Because uh, what we're doing is we're reviewing the EAF. Correct. So, and you don't need, all you really, you just, you're kind of looking at it from a, a, a bigger perspective, so mm -hmm. to speak. You don't need all the stormwater details. Right. You just need to make sure there's enough information where you can say, okay, stormwater is not going to create a significant environmental impact. And then you can say, planning board, you deal with the details on stormwater. We have enough information where we feel it's not going to be a significant environmental impact with respect to stormwater. Um, so then you kick over the details to the planning board. And then we wait for their final determination on for for, the, for their. No, I mean we, we you, needed we needed something in response from them. What what is well, the you would probably want something initially from the planning board or 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 an engineer if, if you need an mm -hmm. engineer to say that stormwater is not going to be a significant environmental impact. Once you get past that threshold, and if you have enough information to issue your negative declaration, then the planning board is free to act, and the zoning board is free to act on their own. All right, I, I'm a little confused then because in, in the past I, I've seen you know where people have circulated. Uh, I, I think it was a short form, but they didn't. They never made a decision on the historic preservation because even on the short form. I think there were four questions, mm -hmm. and, and basically uh, what they asked is, is uh, do we, ha you know, can you fill out these four uh, or respond to these four uh, issues? Mm -hmm. Can we, in dealing with something like stormwater runoff, can we uh, defer that and ask the planning board to respond to those? <coughs> You can ask for their feedback prior to your decision, and they can provide you a report, or their engineer can an engineer can provide you some information to help answer the question as far as small to moderate or significant. There's I think there's a certain box that you get to check. This is why you would you would work with a consulting. I, I know, but I mean, uh, ultimately, the you know we're dealing with issues that the planning board deals with. Understood. But why, the planning, and the why are board. why are we reviewing the stuff that the planning board's going to do? I would. That's what you do as lead agency. <coughs> you're I, you're not I, making I, a final determination. You're you're taking all of the facts that have been gathered and the assess right. You're consult you're consulting your your expert uh, right. Uh, taking their assessment and the other board's assessment and then you as lead agency are making the overall decision. Yeah, you're the it's not an uninformed decision. And that's why it's a coordinated review. I know, but in charge it's to make sure everything, there's that all the information is there, whether you have to obtain it from the planning board or the zoning board or the building inspector, so that you guys can make the ultimate decision whether you need a negative declaration or a positive declaration. Okay, I, I understand that. But, the, the, you know, to me the issue is... Um, we just need an answer to the question. We, I, I don't see why, if the planning board is going to deal with the issue, why doesn't the planning board also answer the question that uh, they normally deal with? John has just said to you, I believe, that they can advise you on, uh, the planning board can advise what it believes that the answer to the questions may be. Okay. We, and we review the planning board's advice in consultation with our, with with our, the, the consultant who is helping us through this process. Okay. We can. I mean, I, I think actually stormwater is probably secondary. I think the big thing here is the historic impacts yeah, that's and the greatest the potential impact. change. And you know, you're sitting there saying, why are we looking at stormwater? If I go to the planning board, they're going to sit there and say, why should we do the agency? Uh, well, I, 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 I know, I know. It just, it, it just, it, it's the what I'm um, concerned about because this is, you know, uh, in 
process that we need to understand how to how we're going to do this in the future. Uh, I just want to know why it is that, and, and I understand that we, as lead agency, we have to make sure that all the, all the boxes are checked. But I don't want to spend any time talking, thinking about stormwater you're because you're not intended. You, you, I, you you're not. You, I, I understand. No I understand that. I understand that. Uh -huh. But I'm talking about process. How do we, how do we address the issue of who answers the question concerning that? Uh, and what my, uh, what my suggestion is is that you know maybe we turn to the planning board and say, planning board, can you give us a response? What your response would be? Right. Um, and they and they can certainly do that. Let me give you an example. I'm working on a project in in, in the county of Rockland, the town of Stony Point. It's it's a huge project. It's um, one of these gasification projects where they take garbage and turn it into energy. Mm -hmm. And they need you know, site plan approvals, zoning amendments, special use permits, but they also need a lot of permits from the DEC, from the state, air, whatever, wetlands, water. Mm -hmm. So the DEC is the lead agency in this, in this huge, massive project. Um, but we have zoning amendments, and I, I represent the town. And the DEC has basically told us, as far as preparing the EIS, we're not even looking at the zoning amendments. That's your job, it's a local thing. So you guys tell us what needs to be done with respect to the zone with respect to the zoning amendments and we'll and we'll just do it. So that's a situation where the DEC doesn't want anything to do with the local zoning amendments because it's not their purview. Um, so the town is working with the DEC and providing the necessary information so that's kind of, you got to kind of work with the other agencies, right? And 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 that's basically the concept of the coordinated review. There's right. one person, one agency which coordinates everything, exactly. but it doesn't mean that the one agency, we're not going to hire a consultant who's going to look at and what and and then the planning board hires a consultant. Mm -hmm. no. We we can sit there and say, planning board, please, uh, you know, address these questions. Zoning board, please address mm -hmm. these questions. Okay. But they're not going to address the the community character of that question. We each address uh, areas of purview. John, right. would you please clarify, a, going off your example, um, this structure is on it's on a state road, but in the village, it is considered a 301 is a village road. Does the county planning board get a look at this because it's on a on a where is it I'm on sorry, Main Street? It's on the other side of the Main Street. No, it's, no, no, it's on this side of the traffic light. I think 301 stops at the traffic yeah, light, if I I'm think not mistaken. Mm -hmm. This is local here. I think right. the state okay, ends just making sure. It's 500 feet. And um, <clears throat> in this case, would the because this is a state and nationally listed structure, mm -hmm. it's not an indi individual landmark, but it is within the state and national districts, is SHPO considered an interested agency? I'm assuming that they need to be notified because if of it's this not specifically listed or nominated, uh -huh. uh, well, they would be an involved in. They, they could, well, could probably uh, list them as interested. Uh, actually, interested well, meaning I, they I don't like actually issue answer. a permit. Say that okay. again. I'm sorry. They don't have to issue a permit with respect. If it was listed, you guys probably know better than I. If it was listed or nominated on the state or federal uh -huh. list, wouldn't they have to? It's not approve it? It's not individually listed. We're not asking for any state action right um it would be an interested uh, in my experience it would be I an interesting interested it's different between oh, interested and involved. Well, john's involved. pointing out something important I, here i, I know now, i understand <coughs> interested and involved. john can you put shipo on the notice uh, yes you can put them on yeah yes that's that's okay, all i want to say but in I'll saying that you missed the more important i, point, I didn't miss out because <laughs> i understood what he was what he was talking about uh so I just want to add Shippo to the list, and we'll send a notification to them if they don't respond in 30 days. Then you know they don't especially care, right? They are an interested agency, not an involved. In interested because they do not have an action to take. For the clarification of everyone else okay. at the table, Al. Okay. If, okay. If they were taking an action, they would be considered an involved agency because they are not. They are an interested agency. Right. Yes. Okay. And therefore, do they have to respond to a 30-day notice? No. I mean, they technically, they're not an involved agency, so they can't be a lead agency. But I have listed interested agencies while circulating for notices of intent 
whatever, you know, you want to get them in the circulation process, get them involved in the process early. Right. That's the, the spirit and the intent of this whole process. Right. So that, that at least nobody can sit there and say, well, how come you guys didn't tell us? And, and what are the other potential? I know you've, we've got a we've got an underground waterway to deal with here, right? With the with the brook. The right. So, do you so who are the other interested agencies? Is it DEC? Is it? Um, well, you're not you're not disturbing the brook. You're not. With, no, is it a federal? It's, it's not, not a regulated. It's not regulated. From what I line. understand from Canadian Watson, it's not a regulated. Water okay. Water, I so. mean, if and if you're not disturbing the stream bed. I don't. I wouldn't say DEC. You can list DEC as interested. In They're certainly not involved. Certainly not involved. Okay. It's up to you if you want to list them as an interested agency, but I don't. And is that something? If the planning, we're thinking of Al's question of coordination. If there is an instance in which we're not sure who the interested parties might be, but the ZBA or the planning board were to say, we think X agency ought to be an interested party. They communicate that to us, and then <laughs> we then notice out. Uh, you can add them to the circulation list. Add them to the circulation list. I mean, again, the whole point here is just to determine who's the lead agency at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. So if you miss an interested agency and you realize, oh, we should have included them, uh -huh. it doesn't matter because they couldn't be lead agency. Anyway, right. Okay. But if you want to include them in the process as far as get them getting notification of certain steps in the process, then that's, that's I, I've done that all the time. Okay. Okay. You know, a lot of times you don't have a county referral here because you're down on the local road, but uh -huh. a lot of times I would list the county as an interested agency mm -hmm. in the circulation, but it, it doesn't apply here. So, so we don't have to send it off to, because I know uh, in other secret processes they, they had to be shipped off to the county. So if it's in the how village, far you are from a, from a, from a county yeah, road. I mean, you have to be within 500 feet of a state, county road, or park, or property. I'm not sure if that's, have you confirmed that yet, or? I have not. Okay, so maybe you just want to confirm that. Again, they're not going, you don't need it for circulation purposes, because again, they're only an interested agency. Mm -hmm. But you can always add them, and of course, you would have to um, refer to them if it was within 500 feet. 500 feet from state or county road? State, county property. road, park, um, highway, even property. Where, no, where is it on Main Street? How far? Yeah, what about the MTA tracks? What? Oh, no, that's much no, more that's than 500. Um, I'm just curious. It's uh, just a, uh, st it's a government thing. Not MTA, I think it's kind of like a quasi. No, it's fair. It's Except fair. you're more than 500 feet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. So, so we we send this um, uh, the notice to yeah the notice. Do we do anything um, before you know while we're waiting for people to respond? You could still read, you know, you can still have the applicant come in and if you want to review it again and go over some review of the Review their, their drawings and you stuff. Don't have to, you don't have to put everything on hold. Okay. So, um, that, uh, that and also, uh, there's a part two and three, which normally we have a, a consultant fill, fill out. Is that correct? I've not been part of a lead agency process yet, desktop. Um, normally, we, we I prepare the negative declarations. Okay, but I, I mean, the, there's a part two and three that needs to be circulated with this, right? Well, you don't. The part two and three is, is kind of, you don't have. You can prepare your own negative declaration where you use the language they use in part two or three, or you can just so the part check two, the box. Part two and three is just for negative declaration. Right. Okay. But the the walking through of the hard look that steps two and three require. Right, you can sit there and go through and, and, and ask the questions, and some boards do that. Some if, boards. And if don't. we if we felt that in answering the the questions and the hard look of parts two and three, we needed outside advice. Like for example, we needed uh, an engineer to to review the report prepared by the applicant's engineer. Mm -hmm. That happens at that stage. When does yes. that that happens at, in the yeah. preparation of? The responses to two and three. Right. 
and how how does from a from a village process point that's is that something that we say to Mr. First we're at a point where we think we need advice how, how do we initiate that process uh, well, because we can't contract with obviously this board can't contract with a consultant right so I, I think you would just have to talk to the village board and um, you know figure out who you want as your consultant and the build board just has to approve it. Um anybody to win three. Okay. Um and, and we don't necessarily have to circulate that to anything to anybody and unless we feel that they it's more appropriate that they handle it. And, you know, we the part two and three. Yeah. In, in other words, ultimately, part two and three is something that we prepare for ourselves mm -hmm. or for the record. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I had a question. I had another question. I don't think it has to bear on this, but I just want to know what I think ultimately the way you should view it, because I think I'm going to leave it up to you guys to decide that, is that um, at what point do you want a decision on demolition as opposed to new construction? I mean, if you're if you're willing to hold off on the question of demolition while we're talking about the proposed new construction. Because there, there are a couple of things. For example, any um, do you have any zoning issues in dealing with the side yard? Um, well, our proposed new construction will, will be clear of the side yard setback, so we won't have a side yard issue. If, if, if the building is demolished, right. at least the side portion is demolished. Okay. Um, and also, if I'm correct, you can actually take you couldn't actually take an action on the demolition until the EAF is completed. Complete, right. So, yeah. Well, then, for that purpose, it probably would be uh, beneficial to have the two applications combined into one, since one is dependent upon the other. You wouldn't ta undertake the new construction without the demolition. Basically, it's a unitary action. So, it's oh, and furthermore, the the consideration of Either a modified structure or new construction are the mitigations which would, are the, are the elements which would mitigate the impact, the impact being demolition. So you sort of can't really separate them too far, I, don't, I wouldn't think. Right, I think it makes sense to have one public hearing. Great. I, I think that. It should mean one application also, in effect. Yes, Combining yes. the applications or simply saying that this is all part of one they're, action. They're so interrelated that. Yeah. They have to be considered together because you know you're demoing it, but you also want to you also have to consider what's what's replacing it. So and what's therefore well, mitigating the impact of the demolition, right? right. Okay. Well, but but I, I think here's the the issue. I mean, as far as uh, the applicant's time being spent, I mean, we're, we're talking about the cost to the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, unless the issue of demolition is resolved, then She's got to prepare three or four different. That's how it works, Al. Not, not necessarily. That's, that's so. how it works. No, that's that how it works. They're not going to demolish just for the sake of demolishing alone. I understand that, but the, the question whether or not the building is demolished will affect: is it a full demolition? Is it a partial demolition? And, and that's that what you were talking do, about. That has to do with what are the mitigation exactly. measures they propose and the alternatives that they're that they're considering in the action. Okay. That's what. That's but, what. But that's but what let me ask you this. Let me let me ask you this. In other words, what are you expecting them to present? For, I think your concern is you don't want them. To, you don't want to get bogged down in like some of the architectural details of this 
propose new construction right. while there's no de determination whether they're it's either going to demo it or if there's right. no neg deck or whatever. Right. So again, when you go through, at least for CEPA purposes, when, you, when you're in analyzing something with respect to a neg deck, everything is kind of, you're, again, you're kind of looking at things from a little higher up, so to speak. You're not kind of getting bogged down with the details. So certainly uh, the demo is, is the lead in this, and you do want some information on, on the new construction, but I wouldn't get too bogged down in the details, especially when you're doing your secret analysis. But what if the there's a preferred alternative where there's complete demolition and complete new construction, but there is a sort of a backup plan for uh, substantial demolition. Right, so it would be an alternative. Yeah, then it's an alternative. So mm -hmm. there's a preferred alternative and there's a secondary Right, so I mean, yes. I've which, I think, which I think is something that we would like to consider. Right, because and I don't I, think we I've want been on large-scale projects where, yeah, you, you know, you're proposing one thing and it's not only, not only is one of the alternatives nothing, but it's, hey, you're proposing this, but we want to see this. You know, you have engineers that have to engineer subdivisions and re redesign things just so the board can study it as an alternative. But I think you've got to also look at the rule of reason and, and be reasonable. Um, you know, a, a, a 200 or 100 lot subdivision, you know, obviously you expect more from the applicant as opposed to a project where it's not the investment and, and the time and the money are more sensitive. So you've but got you, a, a rule of reason. But if you only have one proposed plan, demolition and com complete demolition and complete new construction, and that for some reason um, is rejected, then you have to like start all over again. So it wouldn't be more efficient to have a preferred alternative and an alternative? You could ask okay. for an alternative as part of CEPA, absolutely. But, sure. but wait a minute. Uh, I, I guess my question to you, Carolyn, is uh, what level of detail do you want to know about the proposed construction? Because certainly what I would like to see, if, if we're talking about a new building, I would like to see a lot of detail and very specifics. But my feeling is is that that should apply to whatever is selected as you know go, having gone through the secret process. Most of the secret process, if we're talking about the same uses, the same site, the same square footage, etc., are going to be the same in all the alternatives. If there are one or two or ten alternatives, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the the only thing that will vary is then the design features of it and how Agreed. much is new and how much is old and whether it's zero to a hundred or whatever. Agreed, but I guess the, the issue is is that the level of detail that I would expect for a secret analysis is much l less. In other words, it's not as detailed as I would expect for an application for a historic district review board approval. I would think that you would want to be looking at, again, up from above big picture issues like placement on the lot, mass, scale, roof line. You're at, you asked the question, so I'm trying to answer it. I wouldn't expect that at that stage we'd be looking at uh, specific information about materials, but you'd, be want, you'd want to see under alternative, I mean, I, I would think that you would want to see alternatives. Under alternative A, this is where the building sits, this is the massing. Under alternative B, this is the, where it sits, this is the massing, this is what is retained. That, that kind of big, big picture, big ticket item right. information, not yeah, design detail. You're both well, right. That's, that's what we're <laughs> saying. <right? laughs> you're both right. You're just saying it different You're saying ways. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that, that, that does not the idea of alternatives. Of, of alternatives. I, 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 I didn't say that. Okay. I'm, well, I'm, I'm well, talking, we're talking right. about, we're, we're, Karen asked the question, should we combine the, the HDRB applications? into one yeah. and and you know my question is is that well it's kind of hard I mean the the uh, even if it is part reconstruction there is a level of detail that I would expect in the HDRB application right. as opposed to the secret analysis the, the, the HDRB application is the starting point 
it gives an illustration of what the applicant proposes to do. Just as on, and I hate to bring it up, Butterfield Hospital, we had, there was an environmental process this was going through that we participated in, and that that came to a conclusion, but it did not conclude with the actual design review that we had subsequently. Okay. Okay. So there's a design review that happens subsequently. Just because they submit certain paperwork with certain designs, we are subjecting that first to, uh, to environmental review, and then we get down to the short strokes and the design stuff. Exactly. Agreed. Agreed. That's not the question that Karen asked. We answered her question right now. You just answered the question. Well, all right. Let's do it. We've all answered the question. Yeah, I mean, we're repeating a dead horse. All right, enough. It's more efficient. I think so. Two applications, but one public hearing? Is that what I'm getting? Okay, thank you. We'll have one public hearing. Maybe another way to think about it, Al, a different application example, is when we when we were considering um, the addition on 19 Garden Street, and at the very beginning, we looked at mass models. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And in, in the early stages of Butterfield, we looked at mass models. Big picture stuff. Don't tell us about the light, light fixtures during the secret review. Right? That's what the, the, so I, we're, I'm agree we're in agreement on yeah. that. As part of the secret review, it's a higher level review. We can look at alternatives. But when it comes to the HDRB application, because once page. once we get past neg deck, <laughs> then every each board does their own procedure. Yes. Right. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. That's all we're saying. What else do we need to cover tonight? Well, I, I, I guess the question I just want to make sure, because the <laughs> next meeting that we have is August 9th. So uh, hopefully by then we'll have that, uh, the letter going out, uh, the noti notification yes. mm -hmm. uh, is, starts circulating. Um, Does the 30 days start on the day of receipt of the EAF? Or no, what, what starts the clock? Uh, on the day, I'm assuming the village clerk circulates. I don't want to give more work to Jeff. I know he's busy, no. but whoever has to mail, whoever in the village is mailing the circulation. <coughs> well, the day it's mailed is when the clock starts. Yes, that's the notice, it's the EAF, the plans, and the application materials. Whenever that's mailed, that starts the clock. Well, that's the clerk's job. Or you, if you want. Or you, if you want to, but <laughs> it's the clerk's job. I can have my secretary or paralegal do it, so. It's also cheaper if the clerk does it. Yes. Being okay. mindful of village dollars. Yeah, but just, <laughs> just pretty busy. That's his job. Okay. But he's definitely on top of things. So you have new drawings that you want to submit? Yes. For, like to for which part? Um, well, so the last time we were together, we, we were under the impression that we were ready to talk about what type of building we were going to replace this with. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd like to do that. I know it's late, but I feel like we keep getting late on the agenda and then we're not going to present things that we're working on. So Karen has a, a few possibilities. We wanted to find out yeah, what so your take was so on so we can move in a good direction. Sure. Okay. Happy to do that. Okay. Oh, small so, paper. Um, so five cents. But I, I do want to point out still need that to join us for this? Or? Yeah. Ellie, do you have you? Feel satisfied that we use John's time well and he can go home? Yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you, John. You can't come down? Unless you'd like to stay. You can become part of the public and uh, um, public time. But I, I can, can I not, I don't want to be a jerk, but I do want to point out that it's 10 30 and we have. Okay. Well, this applicant waited through earlier applications as well. So. Okay. Okay, so this is not in somewhat in keeping with everything we were just Yes, thank you very much. Right. I'm my cell phone. I guess you guys have a question. Um, so in keeping with what we were just talking about, we wanted to start to discuss the, the general shape of the building, the mass, 
the size, the position on the lot before we get into any of the minutia of the details. But I feel that it's pretty important to get some feedback from the board because we've drawn some different comments, different um, perspectives on what people would like to see, things that you'd like referenced um, in regards to the building that is currently there. So what we've done in this go around is start to um, develop some different facade options and also plug them into the streetscape in terms of how they would relate to the adjacent buildings on either side. And um, most importantly, we'd love to get feedback on a direction that the board is feeling comfortable with. For example, um, we've created a number of facades with the parapet front um, that currently exists. Um, it is, is that something that you want to see recreated in some fashion um, by way of a, a replica, so to speak, of the existing building? Um, there was also commentary about trying to save or reuse parts of the bay window um, Know, our gut feeling is we would do our best to remove portions of it. I doubt that it will come off the building in one piece, just given the condition of the structure. But there are some redeeming elements of it, like the, the odd brackets, which I think are worth saving mm -hmm. and reusing. But realistically, that bay window um, would most likely be reconstructed, just given the height of the building and having windows that are in proportion to the windows on the new part of right, the structure. Right, you're raising, you're proposing to raise the have a water. Oh. And so, and also as an alternative, because as we started to develop elevations for the parapet front as a standalone structure, we were feeling that it's not necessarily an approach that we love for the new building. Um, so we presented a couple of alternatives um, that illustrate the side with a gable parallel to Main Street and a gable perpendicular to Main Street. And so the reason we've come up with so many alternatives was in response to um, the variety of comments that we've heard from the board, um, you know, things that various people have expressed wanting to see recreated or I shouldn't say recreated referenced in the new structure um, things that for example Kathleen mentioned the, the gable being perpendicular to Main Street is something that's fairly unique on lower Main Street so that was an option we also wanted to represent so um, and we also wanted to illustrate the approximate size of the building in relationship to 124 Main Street, the Silver Spoon, and also 138, the building just up there, um, in regards to um, you know, floor levels and the new construction um, materials, and separation from 124 Main Street, which we're proposing to be approximately six feet so I think you've all looked at the site plans, the existing versus the proposed. I do have that if anyone wants to look at that. Yeah, I would look at it again. And then I've had and do all these alternatives have the same site plan? They do. Because we're working with a footprint for the building that we actually really like and are comfortable with in terms of um, the floor area and the design for the retail space and apartment. And it actually works reasonably well with the different facades. It obviously, we recognize that it will be tweaked with your feedback in terms of both scale, the details. Um, so these. I hope you'll take them for what they are, which is preliminary concepts. Um, and obviously the, the trim details and the 
either side who's going to finesse as we go through the process. Um, but I think it was important for us to see also the relationship of our proposed building in terms of particularly height and placement next to the others. That's, that's very helpful. And so you have another building at the rear of the lot. That's a proposed <coughs> shed which we have not yet designed yet. It would be about 8 by 10 or 8 by 12. Um, it's heavy for storage. Um. Do you have uh, code issues as far as the party wall if it retain if it uh, stays attached or is not attached or six five inches away from the other the building? We do, um, which we would have fire separation issues, so we have to create fire separation. We'd have to do that anyhow with the separation. You know, even though we're separating the building then proposing six feet between them, there are different levels of fire separation mm -hmm. that are required based on the distance from the building. So if we're within five to ten feet, we'll have, I don't know. Presumably Jimmy is doing that now. On the other side? Um, well, I don't know. We <laughs> not, not your problem. One can hope, but, um, um, but we do, yes, have issues. But this is, has nothing to do with our decision making. This is just me making an inquiry because I'm curious because eventually we're going to have to deal if if that's that facade of that structure is exposed we're going to need to deal with that too has Jimmy seen these is he is he aware of the potential impacts of he is aware yes we have talked to him about it we haven't shown him the detailed plans but we have talked to him he does have this plan because this is all stuff that is his that is over the property line. So whether he has actually put together, but Mike is the engineer on his project and they have discussed how the separation would benefit this building. Mm -hmm. well, but you know, even with the work that he's doing, I would assume that he's going to bring his building up to code. One would assume that. However, Which means that uh, he's got. You are not building. Not neither are we. Neither just, are any of us. Just for the record. Okay. What's the difference between um, scheme A and B? Um, very little. Scheme. Um, what I've done in. Um, I feel like I'm doing. Scheme B is actually lower the um, <laughs> the roof height toward the back portion of the building. So if you're looking at the proposed oh. east yeah, elevations. Yeah, yeah. I see it. Um, just to create a little bit of a um, break in the long roof line. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, that so is very. Oh, I see. It's, it's, it's 19 subtle. versus 21. Right. Yep. Correct. Okay. But the front facade. The front is the same. facade. Is okay. the same. Um, okay. And again, these are our preliminary. We wanted to illustrate the difference between like a storefront facade versus in scheme C, where it yeah. has. Looks more like a residential facade. Correct. Yeah. I mean, immediately, I would say the more storefront facades jump out at me is more uh, appropriate for Main Street. Could you say that again? I said what immediately jumps out at me is that um, the more mm -hmm. traditional storefront facades that are being proposed <coughs> are, I think, much more appropriate than Scheme E where um, it looks more residential. Mm -hmm. um, well, again, it's, it's making something up that never that was not, not yeah, it was in that location. Yeah, it wasn't there. Yeah. So, um, the, um, I, I think this is kind of, you know, given the fact that we're going to be going into the environmental review process, this is kind of a waste of our time right now. Why is it a waste of our time? I don't figure it out. I think it's useful think to the applicant, it's actually. Yeah, it's very. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about broad, broad, broad brush broad response. Yeah. Right. Schemes D through F out the window. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or whatever the letters are that are, are the residential. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be, that would be my feedback to you is that. Oh yeah, no, I think I think in that sense you're correct. D but they, F, yeah, sure. But they all seem to be, you know, exactly the same footprint and. Well, so. the facade is a pretty important aspect I would on say Main so. Street. And so having feedback on D through F on 
architectural aspects that this board feels are important because we've heard different things from different people. And so I've tried to actually mm -hmm. offer an alternative mm -hmm. that that addresses each of those thoughts. Like I, the think it's, I think it's wall, totally premature. The bay window. But if I can just finish, the reason why I wanted to present these different alternatives that respond to the comments from the board is that in order for me to further develop the plans and the details and the mass right. and the scale, we need a direction. And as Sue and I have said, you know, we are, the interior footprint is important, but it can be tweaked and, and blended with what the facade becomes. But we need to know where we're headed so that this isn't an endless six month process. You know, and then we want to start to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but recognizing that even with that kind of response, right now the drawings that you're presenting are all new construction. And so it may be that, you know, we can say to you, big, big picture, give, give you big picture response, but it may be that what we're looking at is, uh, you know, the, the design concept but the incorporation of elements that are existing on the site that we haven't talked about yet. Um, so, so understand that, we, that we're not going to be able to give you anything definitive tonight because things are going to change. But you can take, I think we can maybe talk about how things, how, how to narrow your focus so that mm -hmm. things come off your list and your time isn't totally wasted. But can I, I need to ask a question though. Um, I was under the impression that we had agreed that there was nothing except for the bay window that was salvageable or so if you're not talking about now going back to keeping a portion of that structure and trying to add to it. We could there was there was never any decision that was made. No, but we've all looked at that building and and I felt like we agreed that there wasn't something that could take it was no any way. kind of like take some of this off and add something to it just <laughs> structurally looking at that building but we are not structural engineers so what okay. happens that's that's a that's an information gathering so we go okay. and look at the building your engineer sends a report very honestly your engineer you know, of course he's <laughs> your your goal is to demolish the building your engineer is going to support right. that data right is support okay. that outcome what we now do as part of the environmental review is take everything you've given us, all the historical research that Karen has done, the structural assessment that your engineer has looked at, we, we look at all of that and we have the village's own engineer read that, <laughs> that report to say, where, where, where is, this, is this accurate? Is this the only alternative for this okay. building? An engineer is going to come out and look at the structure and not just <laughs> talk, he's going to come or she's going to come and look at that structure and determine. Well, primarily review, review the, report. the report. And then base, if that requires them to come out and take a look and okay. take a look. Okay. Because it would not be, it would not be reasonable for any of us who are trained artists, preservationists, right. planners, architects, architects, to make a structural assessment. Mm -hmm. That would not be smart for the village that, either. Right. I understand that, but uh, okay. Yeah, I feel the same that it seems like we were backtracking from the last meeting. Now, but you I always knew we were under, going to undergo seeker review, of right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, and I'm not disputing that. And I know we haven't gone to a public hearing and we haven't had a vote on the demolition. However, at the last meeting, um, it was pretty clear, and I even asked <laughs> specifically. Um, that, that it would be clarified that you were entertaining. Um, entertaining is not deciding. I understand. Right, being open to no, the option. I understand that. However, now it does sound like you're going back. Like when we talked at the last meeting, we talked about the the new siding not being original. We talked about the entire and that hasn't thing. changed. Right. Okay. All right, and and none of the none of the things that we had talked about have changed. What we're talking about is going through a process where we have to examine all of the options and come up with documentation for the decision that we ultimately will come up with. So I actually am a civil engineer in a previous life and I feel confident that when someone actually comes out and looks at that building, they will agree that 
um, structurally it's unsound and can't take reconstruction or okay so I feel confident about that so what I would love to know tonight is based on what Karen has prepared can we say that we definitely want to see this boomtown front or are you open to a different roof line or at least give us some direction there so we can well, I, I an opinion, opinion. I any kind of opinion. I think it's totally inappropriate because basically all of these are the same site plan <coughs> and essentially the same mass and scale and everything else. So, I mean, we're looking at different skins on the same body. Okay. So, but what's wrong with that? Yeah, but that's Karen, all we're looking if, at is skin. If the applicant you wants know, to continue when, working no, but I mean, if you're to the end. If, if you're going through a whole process where you have basic alternatives that you consider in CEQA, one of which is being a no-build alternative, which is always one of the ones that is considered, and you... A no-build I mean, you being leave the building that's there, there, yeah, that's or... Right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> and no action alternative. Right. <coughs> and, um... Well, what is... Wait, I'm sorry. sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Um... It, you're all presuming that neg deck is automatic, and I think that you cannot presume that neg deck is automatic. I'm not assuming it may that. Come, it may I don't, come that. I'm not assuming that, but I do feel that the building we're proposing falls within um, the code as it exists. So um, I'm not sure why we couldn't do what we are proposing. I guess we're not asking because for because if, if, that, if that were true you wouldn't have to go through any process at all. You would just go to the building department and that's it. No, but I'm saying as far as zoning and planning, I think what we are proposing is not um, at all outside of what we, we right. our, our rights area, are. What you you your rights are planning. visual. It is not visual, it is also the retention. Of the, we talked about this in the very first time we're all together, right? Well, our no, primary purpose right. being the preservation of historic material. But we have right? looked at the historic material. Right, and, and now that that's, that's a, that is a, a data you have found, your structural engineer has found, the village's job as stewards of a district is to now assess that information and come to a conclusion. Okay, okay. can so I ask a question of, uh, of Carolyn? What is it that, that you feel the applicant should be doing? I think they should be going right to the EAF and not and not just keep throwing out more and more uh, designs that are basically the same building with a different skin. I think that's a complete waste of our time and theirs. But why is it a waste of time to say t to the applicant, of the design alternatives you are considering, X is the most consistent with the design with our design standards regardless of how much of that product is existing structure and how much is new structure the design concept is in keeping with our standards you cannot you don't have to spend time on these other alternatives anymore why is but that the, a waste of these time these are all complete new build They've, understood yeah. understood but i'm saying if if the design, if you're looking broadly at the design concept, this design concept could accept portions of the existing structure. So why not feed, give her feedback that says A, B, through F? Go ahead, give your feedback. I mean, that, that's, ahead, that doesn't mean feedback. that this I means demolition is I will abstain from that process because I think that's wrong. Okay. Uh, what but if Karen is willing to risk potentially wasting her time on something that might not come to fruition, if the alternative is saving a lot of time once we're done with the EAF and she needs to have a building to be designed, then I think it's Well, this is a workshop and the purpose of the workshop the, is to... I think it's up to the applicants to decide so. how well, they would well, like their time to go. This is not a workshop. We have an This is a voting session. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. This but is a voting session. We never mind. <laughs> all right. We yeah. do not have a complete application. We cannot vote on a darn thing because you only have a complete application if you have a secret application in front of you, too. Okay. okay. This is not a complete application. Period. So we can't what, vote on anything. But who's voting on anything? We're You're just voting. saying that this is a voting session. This is a voting session. Yes, I we're think. in a voting session because we just voted a certificate of application to uh, on Three Furnace Street. I know, but uh, okay, but that was a cool. 
Okay. But we're not looking but we for a vote. But they're not, not looking for a vote, vote. But, but this is still a voting session. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way it was advertised. Okay. And if I'm correct, as part of the CEPRA, you need to look at the mitigating exactly. factors. Right. So the new exactly. building does need to be considered as an alternative. And as an alternative. Back so that right. we're not waiting 30 let's, days. Let, 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 yeah, let, let's, let's give Karen direction on what she needs to work on. I agree with you that the EAF is, is the, the document that needs to be generated because that's on the critical path. This is all good information because it gives, you, gives us an idea of what you're thinking of as far as the design styles. And I think that anybody who here who wants to give some feedback should give her feedback so that at least she has an understanding of what... Um, sure. Go ahead. But Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. I, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me run the meeting. Okay. That's so, new. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Carol. Um, and so, anybody who has uh, some thoughts, please give them to Karen. That's true. Sure. Um, because you're thinking. I am. I've been thinking this entire time. I um, like the reincorporation of the mm -hmm. whatever we're calling this. Turret? The poppy thing. The, the, the poppy thing. <laughs> the poppy thing. Um, I think it's also in a good look. I, I like it being where it is. Not only is it reflective of the existing location of the two, but in a way it does sort of shield this secondary door. Um, which I realize you, you're yes. incorporating for ADA compliance or, or just Correct. ease of use compliance. Mm -hmm. So, um, but really the, the primary door is the one that's on the, the primary facade. Um, I think the, the, the flat parapet is, is, a, is really critical as we discussed. Um, but also, it's it's not just the parapet; it's the parapet in conjunction with the um, perpendicular. Also, cable. I think the orientation of the roof line. Um, I folded up my existing plans, but um, the orientation of the roof line. It's the same. There's the existing. Thanks. Um, is that in keeping with? Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as the difference between A and B, the the height, nineteen to twenty one, um, if it's not a, if it's not critically different on the interior, which actually I don't think it is because it looks like you're, it's not, it looks it's like it's all it's happening in the attic. Uh -huh. I actually think the the deeper cut in between mm -hmm. them kind of. M m looks more elegant. I think the shallower divide looks a bit like the way it looks now, which is right. like a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think having, uh, you know, having the more dramatic change mm -hmm. from one, and also this, if I'm, if I'm looking at the site plan correctly, this window and this door are on a plane, which is set, set. back. Correct. I mean, well, I don't know how far it's set back, but um, so it does sort of, relate a little bit more to our very frequent village story of mm -hmm. things cobbled in succession as so. families and businesses grow. Um, the one thing that I'm concerned about, and, and it's a little bit hard to tell in the flat drawings, but the depth of this rear extension, mm -hmm. um, I just am ha I just need to have a better understanding of how it's going to kind of impact the overall. I know, I know that you have the street views and everything, but um, I think I just need to like noodle on that a little more and, and really understand how much of a space it's going to be. Um, I'd I'd almost be because it because it is such a big because it is so deep. I'd almost be more interested in seeing this the plane like faces the street used as the secondary facade mm -hmm. rather than this section here 
again, it's something that you need to like compare to your floor plate just so that it has a little bit more of a purpose and not just this. Mm -hmm. um, Can you hold it up and say what you just said? Do you mind? Yeah, this. So this grayed out area uh -huh. is drawn oh, at oh, 10, I see. I see 8 mean, coming yeah. off the so, side. Uh -huh. And it really is just, you know, it's really just window. It's just uh -huh. two sets of windows. It's, It seems like it's a big chunk of uh -huh. wall. Obviously, it's set back from the street. And there's all manner of things that are going to make it seem less dramatic. But it's just the one thing that's kind of pointing out. Yeah, and so it's pointing out to me too. as being something that's like, to me, that's one of the elements that makes it a very contemporary, you know, a much more modern building than, um, well, than it's, it originally was. It's bulkier and it's not, um, it, it makes it more horizontal than the other buildings on Main Street where everything is very vertical. And mm. so I think, um, I noticed yeah, that too. A, it makes it, or, or, or as most things are kind of just continue further, deeper and deeper into the law line. Yeah. Because so, or none, I mean, I would say so few, but I think none other buildings have this yeah. like extra wide lot. No one else really has the opportunity to do something like that. Mm, so right, right. it just makes it seem a little bit more. But like you're right. A, if you put, if you could put a door there, it would at least make it look a little more utilitarian. It would look like it, it would was fall in line with more things on Main Street. Yeah, it would kind of. It would almost be lines. more like. Um, I mean, it's a totally different construction. But even like how, um, you know, next to the general store, there's the there's the brick building, and then there's that like smaller sort of like barn building that is. Mm -hmm. You know, an, mm -hmm. an alternate entrance yep. to the building. What, um, so this width, so is this width reflective of the current building? It's actually narrower. The current, oh, it is narrower. The current building is about 26 feet wide, hmm. and we're going down to about just under 23 feet. Just under 23. Okay, so you're actually not, so this line, because you're moving everything over six inches, but you're losing two feet. So this line, so the, Sean, yeah. I, I hate to... I, I think we, we do have more of an agenda. I think, uh, can you give brush stroke responses as opposed to detailed, uh, it, you know, Yeah, I think it's a good direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my response. Okay, thank you. I, I am just concerned about this thing in the back. Um, but that can be worked out later. So <laughs> it, either needs to be, it either needs to be made much less of an event or much more of an event. Okay, and so your gut feeling is you prefer the parapet front versus the other alternate this sides. This right here. Absolutely. Street B, play mm -hmm. around with this section here, figure out a way to make it more um, consistent with other buildings. And just walk up and down Main Street. I mean, you're right there anyway. Your yeah. office is there. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. familiar with it. So. I walk up and down all the time. <laughs> so. I, I mean, but you know what? You, you walk up and down and um, Carolyn is no, walking project, towards all the really time. Yeah, you, you, you forget. You know, like you just don't. You're so used to seeing things that, uh, but that it's would hard be, to be. Yeah. You have a I mean, fresh that, set of eyes. So. Of the new construction designs, I think that's okay. moving in the a direction yep. that I would eventually like to yes. see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I also think that if it does come down to being a, whatever, a mishmash of different things, or even if there's an issue with the separation, this design as it stands is something which could be, would not look stranger if it were, mm -hmm. if it did have to be tight to Jimmy's building. I think it's still mm -hmm. a successful direction in reusing the bag and even putting the extension on the back. Mm -hmm. All right. Andrea, anything else? No. Kathleen. My my concerns have been raised. Um, I just, in a definitive way, I would not consider anything after C. Um, and I don't want to repeat. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, Al, yes. Oh, oh, sorry, Al. <laughs> oh, actually, I would not consider anything after B because C has a more residential feel, which is not. Right. Um, I have to agree with that. And this is uh, you're, we're definitely talking about a, a commercial building, so it needs to look commercial. Uh, so I think all of the residential schemes uh, are are kind of tenuous. And, and C, even though theoretically the first floor could be commercial, it's you know it really looks. Yeah, and that's a business owner. You're not going to want a commercial a residential looking front. Uh, I certainly don't think that going to brick is going to help at all. Okay. And, you know, I'm from Philadelphia. I love bricks. <laughs> 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 Mid Atlantic, look. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, and we're, we're, we're saving, not saving you money. Okay. We're saving yeah. you money. Um, so, uh, I have to agree. I think the parapet makes sense visually from the standing from the street. <clears throat> Uh, what I would suggest is if you can take a look at uh, and, you know, something where it's a real parapet as opposed to a phony parapet with a, uh, a dormer roof behind it, uh, that would make me happy. Can you explain that? What you mean by that? I mean, right now what you've got is this. With that sort of roof behind it, right? Yeah. Slope in this roof. Well, there, there's really no reason because I think that's the way Jimmy's. Uh, I'm not even sure of it. But, you know, is there any reason why you can't have a parapet and then pitch the roof back? No, we could pitch the roof back. All right. Well, but the way, if I'm understanding you correctly, yeah, okay, okay. This, is, this is more representative of how the building was originally designed. Right. Agreed, agreed. And, and you know, but this is, if we're talking about new construction, then this uh, is that's new. that's a character defining feature. Yeah, I, I would I would not be in support. Well, of that. the parapet is the character defining feature. But the, the way the, the but also the roof line, roof orientation. Um, this is not a. They've gotten our feedback. We have other applicants. Uh, uh, well, we okay. But, well, well, I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. You know, but at least I, I'd like to be able to okay, also. Just so that's that's if you could look at that option. Okay. That's it. Okay, thank you. Now, thank you. the thing is, is that um, uh, on the agenda for August 9th? Yes, we'll be first on the agenda, right? <laughs> we've, we've, now knocked, we've, we've now knocked off, knocked out all of the old business. Look, the way they're addressed is I'm old just, business. They are addressed in the order they were received. Okay. We haven't knocked out all the old businesses because 224 is going back. back. But do, what do we need to, what are we actually going to have to talk about on the night? Because, well, uh, we, need to, we need to start proceeding with the uh, part one on the EAF. Part two and three. Part she, two and three. She, she Karen, does, Karen, Karen does, does part one. Right, and we do part two and three. But do we, but we start doing part two and three after we review the submission of part one, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is which and determine is whether or not, not we need more um, No, but hopefully it will be done in the next few days, and we'll just get it to the village hall. But we'd like to come back on the ninth because we'd like to proceed with our development of the plans and better massing models, so we can really get a feel of it. And I think it's important to keep it moving um, in some regard. So. Okay. Yep. So if you would put one set in the, there's a, there's a demo folder and a new folder, a new construction folder, and they're going to need to be collapsed. Just make sure there's one set of what was turned in today. Oh, um, I have a set. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Take care. Are you taking that home? I'm taking that home. I'm taking that home. How about Garden Street? No, Hilton and Karen is offering to let another applicant who's been waiting come forward since she...